What's up y'all, Kyle here. You're watching Driving and Vibing. We just finished the plumbing system up. We're gonna put some water in there, pressurize it. Before we show you all those results though, I'll walk you through the system, so stay tuned. to put water in this thing for the first time since we've gotten it almost a year ago. So let's fill this thing up and see what happens. All right, we got it going. Cool, we're gonna let this fill up real quick and I'm gonna walk you through the system while the fresh tank fills up. All right, y'all, so the water system starts with the fresh water tank. These Argosies made in the 70s, and really every Argosy that I've seen, only has a fresh water inlet to the water tank, and it doesn't have any city water connections. So after we cleaned up our fresh water inlet, we also drilled a hole in the side of the Argosy so we could install a city water connection so we'd have the option if we were at an RV park to just plug into the water source rather than have to fill our tank up. That wasn't too hard. You can see how we did it here, riveted it on, and then hooked it up right inside. I'm gonna bring you inside and show you what the plumbing looks like now. So I'm sitting here where our bed will be, right at the front of the rig. This is where the original water tank was located and it's where we're keeping the water tank for this renovation. Right after the water tank is where we put the water pump in, and that pressurizes the whole water system here. We also modified the old battery bank which just had room for one battery. There's a door that has access to under the rig. So what we did is keep that door there. Now we can open it and have access to this shower nozzle and the water drain valve for the water tank. So that'll be a fun uh, little addition outside of the rig. We can give River a bath and have hot water access right there. And from here, we're gonna work our way down to the sink where the first water connection is. Olivia picked out this beautiful residential style sink. It gives us a deep basin and also a tall uh, spout faucet, so lots of room to work. All of these pipes in the pressurized water system are made up of PEX. We found that those connections were easy to make and uh, had a very solid and reliable connection. So we plumbed up the uh, hot and cold water to the sink and leading to the gray water tank is one and a half inch PVC pipe. We use that primarily throughout our whole gray system to drain the water down. And uh, I learned how to cement these things together and the fumes were awful. So I tried to wear a mask most of the time, but hey, another skill learned. So in this closet right here on the driver's side is where our water heater is and um, it was pretty easy to plumb up as well. It was PEX to half inch threaded connections on the water heater. It was a pretty simple connection and uh, that's going to give us hot water now. So right behind me is where the other sink is going to be for the vanity in the bathroom. This is a custom sink we made out of just a country style wash basin. Uh, Tom plumbed that up so it is able to drain water without leaking and it works beautifully well. And again, the one and a half inch PVC taking us down right below to the gray water tank. Over here is the fun shower we made. And uh, I showed you a little bit in the previous video making this shower pan out of foam board, fiberglass, and then epoxy. So after we did that, it was Olivia's idea to plumb this up with exposed piping. We used copper piping, half inch, just like the PEX. 
with the shark bite connections we're able to hook the pex piping right up to the copper with the same connector so it really made it super easy we have these exposed valves to turn the hot and cold water and it all leads into an oxygenic shower head and i'm really happy with the way it turned out All right, y'all, so now we are underneath the RV by the gray water tank. This is the gray water tank holder. The tank is inside there. It protects it from the elements a little bit more. And uh, you can see these connections we have going to it. This is all um, one and a half inch PVC again. And the PEX is running underneath the camper and bringing the water into the shower. This will all be insulated and protected with the underbelly once we're all said and done. So this will be completely protected. If you look over this way, you can see right here is a three inch PVC. This is what's going out of the gray water tank and letting us use just a standard connection in an RV park. So. That'll keep our connections all the same whenever we go to an RV park, have no issue with connecting and draining our gray water. So that is what it looks like underneath here. All right, so let's pressurize this system and see what happens. What do you think? Well, I like the plumbing. It looks like we have a few leaks, I'm sad to say. One of the leaks is right where the fresh water inlet is. We gotta seal that up just a little bit better. It was kind of cracked whenever we got it and instead of buying a new one, we tried to repair it. So we're gonna have to revisit that repair and see if we can make it leak proof. It was barely dripping any water, but still, that's more than we wanna deal with off the bat. So we'll check that one out. few of the other things we noticed is that some of the P-traps needed a new gasket on them. We were using the wrong size gasket. Once we replaced the gasket, no more leaks happened. So right now, our status is we have a pressurized rig with no leaks in the pressurized pipes and no leaks in the gray water pipes and the plumbing heading out of the rig. One of the problems we did have is that our water pump was not recognizing whenever the pressure was up to its max. So the water pump kept on trying to pressurize the pipes and not turn off, even when the city water was turned on in pressurizing the pipes. So it seems like we're gonna have to get a new water pump. This water pump was given to us about a year ago and we hooked it up and it did pump all the water just fine, but it never cut off even when the pipes were pressurized. So we're gonna get a new water pump and see if that solves the problem, see if that can recognize whenever the pipes have complete pressure. Other than that though, I'm very happy with the system. Uh, our water tank, our water heater is now filled up, ready to heat the water up, and uh, we're one step closer to being complete.
Thank you guys for watching today. If you got any questions, ask those in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Later on.